welcome back to my channel for another edition of this old Gibson. I'm Scott and this is a Gibson SG and it's in dire need of a headstock brake repair. Today I'm going to glue it up first by putting wax around the areas that I don't want the glue to stick to and then we'll glue it and clamp it. First we'll wax it. I'm going to use a good old Johnson's paste wax and just get it on a Q-tip and get it all around the truss rod, the truss rod washer, and the area inside the truss rod cavity. Try not to leave too many fuzzies on it. Okay, now I'm going to flip the guitar. You can see the break. Cleaned out some of the loose fibers. I'm going to use liquid hide glue. I'm going to go in here and pump it in. Oh yeah, it's easy to clean up. It's super thin and uh, should make for a nice glue up. We're gonna reinforce it with carbon fiber rods. So, real quick though, I'm gonna flip it over again. Just see how much oozed out. Not much. Not much at all. Get some hot water here. Just give her a quick wipe. A dry paper towel. I've got my call, which has also been waxed. And this other MDF call right here has been waxed. Both both calls have been waxed. I think I'll get four clamps on here. Now if a little bit of my high glue gets down in that truss rod cavity, I can probably pop it on off of there uh, when I take the clamps off later because I waxed it and that should keep the glue from sticking too much. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if this one's completely level. You know, I'm going to be running a, I'm going to be routing in a little channel on either side of the truss rod and I'm going to inlay the uh, eighth inch by three eighths carbon fiber rods and then we'll refinish it in black. And here's the glue up. Right after this shot, I flipped the guitar over and the weight of the clamps added a little extra pressure towards the back side of the neck there, right where it needed it. And I let it cure for four hours. Now I'm back over to Doug Proper's guitar workstation and this handy little jig that I made, which is inspired by Ted Woodford's uh, neck spline jig. Difference is the router bit I'm using is only an eighth inch cut and it's it's a quarter inch shank of the Bosch, Bosch Colt router. The length of the bit is about two and a half inches. If you want to try this yourself then you'll know what to buy. The bits come in different um, arrangements also like there's the spiral which i love i love the spiral bits they can be like two or three flutes and uh, i kind of like using the downward spiral cut it's called a down cut bit for this job because it leaves a cleaner edge on the surface where the lacquer is if you were cutting a saddle you'd want an up cut because it leaves a perfectly flat um, bottom to the channel and it also 
re helps remove the material on like a rosewood bridge, which is a very oily wood. You'd want that upcut bit because you want the sawdust to, to exit or be exhumed from the channel. Whereas this neck being mahogany, it doesn't matter. It's so soft, so a down cut works better for me here. Here you'll get to see the bit going right in. Making the cut. I'm keeping the volume low on that. Sounds like we're in a dentist office. I have it running at a speed setting five. Not all the way maxed out. I think six is the highest setting. Right there I removed the uh, eighth inch template that sits in the bottom of the jig so that I can make finish off the cut a little bit deeper. Again, this is my first time trying this on the back side of the neck. I've done it a couple times on the headstock face and it's always worked real good. No one's uh, had a re-break yet. So far, so good. I watched a few videos and, and built this one and it you know it fits the Bosch Colt router real nice you can just take material like I did half inch MDF and uh, if you like this jig you can go ahead and make one you know the you can basically it's it's six and a half inches wide by ten inches long you might even want to make it shorter I think about nine eight or nine inches long would probably be better I'd go nine next time if I made another and these are, uh, this is quarter 20 threaded rod. You can also buy bolts that are quarter 20 and just cut them. I cut them with the uh, reciprocating saw with a bimetal blade and a little bit of 3 one oil. Um, these particular knobs are quarter 20, but they're not through knobs. In hindsight, I may have just bought, maybe I'd buy some through knobs. I have some, but, um, and then to hold it all together, I cut these little strips of quarter inch MDF and you know once I get it over the, the headstock they just slide in like this and that and you start tightening it. A little bit of cork on the bottom side of either either and this one I took and I kind of ramped it on the belt sander because the, the way the neck is coming in at an angle I didn't want it to just be resting on the very edge I wanted it to have a little more surface area. So I, I don't know if you can tell, but that's kind of ramped this way. And uh, that's kind of pretty much my jig for, for cutting the eighth inch slot for the carbon fiber. The carbon fiber stuff is a uh, eighth inch by three eighths. And it comes in a long, you know, two foot piece from Stu Mac. And I'm gonna take this and the guitar down to the uh, to the garage and I'll do a, I'll cut this to length on the belt sander I mean at the uh, the bandsaw and then I'll shape it on the disc sander for that radius that the uh, slots have on both ends and then I'll glue it in with epoxy this is a through knob right here so the rod goes through it and I think over at Lowe's you can buy four foot pieces of this stuff it's called thread all or something um, but also quarter 20s just, you know, it's quarter inch in diameter and uh, it has 20 threads per inch. I guess that's what that means. And um, some of the other rod that we use is like 5 sixteenths by 18 and there's some 3 eighths by... Now I mix equal portions of the G-Flex thickened. Two kinds of G-Flex, and this happens to be the thickened, which I like. I like it a lot. One point seven two grams. Let's see if we can get. Okay, one point eight grams. See if we can get the same amount. There we 
There we go. Took that little extra bit right there. And I uh, got a perfectly one-to-one -one ratio of the thickener and the hardener. I mean the resin and the hardener. And I'm going to mix it for at least one minute before I stick it in the hole. I'm going to start with filing. If I want to save a little time, I've got a rasp. I can get a head start on this whole thing with a rasp. But I uh, don't want to hit the paint with it so much. I think this file's really nice. So the, the main deal here is... Um, you want the carbon fiber in this area to be full height so it might be a little deeper on either end and you might have to fill more on either end up here at the surface but the main thing is that this middle part doesn't we don't end up going and removing material carbon fiber material too much from this area whereas this is the area that needs the most support so the more we reduce the height of the uh, carbon fiber in this area, the weaker we're making this this area of the guitar. So do whatever you need to do to make sure you've got full depth right here at the nut. With your, um, you know, use your when you're when you're routing the slot, make sure you go in with your uh, caliper and make sure that you have you know the good three eight three eighths of an inch full depth there. See, right now I've just barely hit the carbon. So I'm going to be doing this for a while. You can tell because the carbon dust is black and you don't want to get that in your, on your hands or you know on the floor too much. I got a trash can underneath. Oh, I got it on the swing. 
swivel. And you lock her in. Next, the glue, the boost. I've got one dedicated paper towel for the accelerator. And the rest of these scraps are for applying the Fill and Finish Thin by Glue Boost. Right there, I just sprayed some accelerator over by the exhaust fan. And uh, we can give it a wipe, you know. We can give it a another shot of the accelerator. Um, you know, you can use a respirator, or you can install an exhaust fan like, like I did. You know, if you if you do this all the time, you'll want to you'll want to invest in an exhaust, nice exhaust fan. Mine just ventilates out into the attic because I'm a, I'm up here in the on the top level, and uh, there's an attic space on the adjacent wall or on the other side of this wall where I installed the fan. And sometimes I wear a mask and I run the fan. Depends on how stinky things are getting. I've actually got quite an area to fill right here. So I'm going to use the fill and finish thick. If that's what they call it. Just a blob right there to fill that hole. And there's another hole. And you'll see that since the accelerator is, you know, in the in the open here, that um, everything's drying. Everything's curing quite quickly. Just get that accelerator on a paper towel and keep hitting it. Alright, now before you start going and doing any major finish work on your old lacquered guitar, I want to make sure you do these couple of steps. And this is to clean the lacquer. I take naphtha on a maroon. Oh, here we can see where it's already been refinished right here. Look at that. So you're looking for this, right here there's a little a difference here. You can see, uh, I think they just sprayed black over top of the clear the last time they refinished this neck. This neck has been broken many a time. So um, it's been painted over up here also, the serial numbers. So some prima donna came in here and just painted right over the stamped serial number. And that was a no-no. But I want to thank my customer Sloan for telling me about this. Um, he cleaned his guitar with cotton balls and naphtha. And when I did his repair, there were no witness lines at all when I was done. So I added the step of uh, using the maroon because when I'm going over the... He was cleaning his guitar. I'm actually prepping it for finishing. So this miracle of rubbing the finish with cotton balls seems to have something going for it. So I take the cotton ball and I just rub the finish for a while. You can see the work these guys did. They just kind of, don't tell me they, I don't know what they did, but uh, there seems to be black paint coming off on my cotton ball, so I think they sprayed black paint over clear lacquer, or black lacquer over something. Anyways, let's start finishing. We wipe, because wiping is good. Okay, I'm continuing to uh, kind of smooth things out by drop filling a thin fill and finish and accelerator. While listening to Luth Group interview with Mark Stutman from Folkway Music. Sorry about the noise. But I'll sand this and then uh, prep it for black paint. We'll be making our progress for the day. Um, I've been in touch with Collins, but I've sent pictures. Um, I've not yet 
the back thing, then like, this was actually, at, for a short while, the way they were making these big cars, or if somebody that was working there wasn't happy with the big dog or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know because I don't have another one really pretty well so I'll pull up. Oh um, but you can hide it by strategically using pigment to break that line and create basically a dotted line of different colors matching what your your guitar colors are. So the colors that Just in from the spray window, I, uh, I masked everything off and then I uh, hit it with a, one coat of this uh, clear ultra flow, waited a half hour, hit it with this here black, and then waited another half hour and another coat of the clear just to kind of lock things in. And uh, we're ready to peel off the tape. So this was just so I wouldn't get black on the binding is what the, all this tape was and if it peels off nicely which it is we're ready to do some more clear coats and the rest of the coats I'm gonna do inside with some uh, wipe on poly I started using the wipe on poly as a barrier coat uh, because it has it's a water base and it doesn't reactivate with the solvents in the lacquer and smear the color but I've recently found a way that if I do four coats of it with uh, the maroon scotch bright in between or the gray the gray uh, scotch bright pad in between I can get actually a, a real nice finish on it so and it I can do it in one day rather than five weeks with lacquer so that's what I'm going to do on this one. Gray Scotch Bright Pad, just a light scuff. Not enough to uh, remove any of the black, but just enough to kind of give the poly a little tooth to grab onto. I'm just pressing very lightly. All right, so we're here. And, um, you know, this guitar wasn't perfect. It had been broken a few times and it doesn't have to live up to Gibson's standard of a finish. You know, it doesn't have to be a nitro finish on the top coat anymore because this is just a guitar that's been compromised. So it's perfectly okay that I'm wiping on some poly This guitar doesn't end up going into a museum or anything. It's not owned by anybody famous. Just a guy that likes to play his guitar. So that's it's, it's so easy how, you, how we can put on this wipe on poly. I like to feather out the edges where I ended on both ends with the dry side of the towel. And then I just wait an hour and I come back for the second coat. Alright, it's been a couple hours. I just want to do a quick scuff with the gray Scotch Bright. And coat number two Wipe on Poly. So thin. Very thin coat. I had a few extra days with the guitar, so I went ahead and did about 15 coats of French polish. Wet sanded and hit it with the uh, Meguiar's Mirror Glaze 105 Ultra Cut Compound and a little bit of 
carnauba wax and she's a looking good so hey guys appreciate you tuning in as always thanks so much if you really want to support the channel and get something out of it for yourself uh, go to my homepage on YouTube hit the about button and you'll see a link there for t-shirts coffee mugs whatever go to uh, ink and select the t-shirt of your choice and color. It's of this beautiful logo right here done by Brian Hanlon. And uh, we'll see you next time.